Psalm 136. It's funny, whenever you ask somebody who says they're not ready, when are you going to be ready? They always say, I don't know. So, yeah, when it's too late. Psalm 136, we're going to read this chapter, then we're going to go to a a chapter in the book of Luke and read a few verses from there. All right, let's all stand out of respect to God's word. Psalm 136. O give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. O give thanks unto the God of gods, for his mercy endureth forever. O give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endureth forever. To him alone, who alone doeth great wonders, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that by wisdom made the heavens, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that stretched out the earth above the waters, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that made great lights, for his mercy endureth forever. The sun to rule by day, for his mercy endureth forever. The moon and stars to rule by night, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that smote Egypt in their firstborn, for his mercy endureth forever. And brought out Israel from among them, for his mercy endureth forever. With a strong hand and with a stretched out arm, for his mercy endureth forever. To him which divided the Red Sea into parts, for his mercy endureth forever. And made Israel to pass through the midst of it, for his mercy endureth forever. But overthrew Pharaoh and his host in the Red Sea, for his mercy endureth forever. Him which led his people through the wilderness, for his mercy endureth forever. Him which smote great kings, for his mercy endureth forever. And slew famous kings, for his mercy endureth forever. Zion, king of the Amorites, for his mercy endureth forever. And Og, the king of Bashan, for his mercy endureth forever. And gave their land for an heritage, for his mercy endureth forever. Even an heritage unto Israel his servant, for his mercy endureth forever. Remembered us in our lowest state, for his mercy endureth forever. Hath redeemed us from our enemies, for his mercy endureth forever. Who giveth food to all flesh, for his mercy endureth forever. Who give thanks unto the God of heaven, for his mercy endureth forever. And that is amazing. Turn over to the book of Luke, the book of Luke chapter 18, and verse number 9, Luke chapter 18, verse number 9, Luke chapter 18, verse number 9, and we're going to read through verse 14, and he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. God, notice it says he prayed thus with himself. <clears throat> God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, even as this publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican, standing afar off, would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For every one that exalted himself shall be abased, he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. <clears throat> Let's pray. Father, thank you again for the Bible. Help us tonight to pay close attention to this wonderful truth, to enjoy it, <clears throat> and to realize that it's for us. I pray that you uh, put every, all distractions out of our mind, and that we'd be able to concentrate solely on the Word of God tonight, and make the necessary adjustments we need to make in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Good. Aren't you glad that God has used so many different songwriters over the years to write songs that when we're going through a hard time, we can sing those songs. Amen. Praise the Lord for godly Christian music. I underline the word godly. It's a big difference between godly Christian music and Christian music. Big difference. <clears throat> and I thank God for godly Christian music. What a blessing it's been to my life over the years. And God has really used music in, in my life. I was a big music fan before I got saved. <clears throat> and not, not the right kind at all. But after I got saved, my love for music continued. But this time it was the right kind of music. And God has really used it to be a blessing to me. <clears throat> We're going to talk about God's mercy tonight. And uh, <clears throat> one of the greatest and most important words in the Bible is the word mercy. One of the greatest and most important words in the Bible. Mercy. You see it so many times. We're going to talk about that tonight. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the word of God. Help us to listen again. Not be distracted by anything going on around us, but to fully give our hearts to this, to to your word, and to be doers of the word, not hearers only. In Jesus' name, amen. It means to stoop with kindness to an inferior with pity and compassion. That's what mercy means. 
to stoop with kindness to an inferior with pity and compassion. I'm going to make, give you a practical definition also in just a second here. But there's scores of verses that talk about our God as a merciful God. I have <clears throat> in this message tonight 173 Amen. verses that I wrote down while I was studying for this. I wrote, I didn't write the verses down, I wrote the references down. And, um, but I figured it out. If I was to read every verse tonight, and if, if every verse took on an average 30 seconds to read, um, we'd be here for 87 minutes just reading the verses. Amen. And, uh, and, I mean, there's just a lot of verses. And I didn't, I didn't write them all down. There's, there's more than 173 verses. So the Bible talks a lot about the mercy of God. Now, tonight, I'm not going to read you all 173 verses. We'd be here a long time, like I said. But <clears throat> I'm going to give you some. But we're going to look at mercy as a practical part of our life. I'll tell you what, I'm grateful tonight that I have a loving, all-powerful, all-wise, forgiving God. But more, more, than, more than I need anything as I live in my daily life, I need His mercy. It's because of His mercy that I am not consumed every day. Because every day I fail to live exactly like He wants me to live. I sin daily. I battle the flesh part of me that is drawn to all the worldliness around me. Sometimes I give in to that and I sin. <clears throat> right then and there I deserve to be destroyed because God hates sin. I have sinned against a perfectly holy and righteous God. I wish we could all get a hold of that. We sin against a perfectly holy and righteous God. That's how dirty and filthy and rotten our sins are. They're not just, oh well, sin. No, they're dirty, filthy, rotten sins. Because they're against a holy and righteous God. <clears throat> I have done something that he hates. I have at that moment stolen myself back from his ownership of me and have done what I wanted to do with my life. At that moment, I need mercy. I must have mercy. A man stood before the judge guilty of his crime, and he knew it. It was sentencing time. He asked the judge if he could say a word. The judge consented. <clears throat> the man said, Judge, I'm not asking for pardon, for I know I'm guilty. What I'm asking for is mercy. Mercy is God giving you what you don't deserve, and God not giving you what you do deserve. That's what the publican wanted. He said, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Give, please give me what I don't deserve. <clears throat> Today I want to look at mercy as the Bible describes it to us. <clears throat> I think if you, if you listen, you're going to understand what God's mercy is all about and how it will help you as you live your daily life. And I think it will help you to be a better Christian too. If you realize the mercy of God, so we're just gonna we're just gonna do a, a Bible study tonight uh, on the mercy of God. I want you to use your Bible. I'm gonna turn a lot of scripture, like I said, not 173 verses, but a lot of scripture. And if you will just uh, get there as quick as you can, if not, write the reference down because I'm gonna give you a lot of references, at least, about mercy. And this is something you need because when you mess up, not if you mess up, but when you mess up. You've got to realize you have a God who is merciful. A God who is willing to stoop with kindness to an inferior with pity and compassion. That's the way he is. Even though he hates sin, <clears throat> he's not wanting to destroy you because you broke his law. He wants to have mercy on you. See? Now, it is one of the characteristics of God. God is a God of mercy. Psalm 62, 12. Psalm 62, 12. <clears throat> the Bible says here, <clears throat> Also unto thee, O Lord, belongeth mercy. Mercy, but real mercy, belongs to God. All right? It's important to realize that. It is, it is His. It is His to give. And by the way, it's His to give to whom He wants to give it to. Romans chapter 9, verse 15. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. See? I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. Well, you know what? When I read that verse, it tells me God's not going to be merciful to everybody. But I want to find out who He will have mercy on. If I, He's going to have mercy on whom He will have mercy, well, who is that person? And I'm going to find out in the Bible who he is so I can be in that position so that when I need mercy, I'll get it. 
Now, <clears throat> Nehemiah 9.31, let me give you some of the, 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 uh, the teachings on mercy in the Bible. The Bible says that he is gracious, Nehemiah 9.31, he is gracious and merciful. It is a, an important part of God. God is gracious and merciful. Matthew 23.23, 23, uh, mercy is an important part of the law of God. Okay, mercy is an important part of the law of God. Let me turn to let me read to you Daniel chapter 9 and verse number 9. Daniel chapter 9 verse number 9. The Bible says here Daniel chapter 9 verse number 9 to the Lord our God belongeth belong mercies and forgivenesses though we have rebelled against him. That's that ought to excite you. To the Lord our God belong mercies and forgivenesses though we have rebelled against him. You see, it's just an important part of God's law. Real mercy is of God. 2 Samuel 24, 14 says his mercies are great. 1 Chronicles 21, 13, David was, was, uh, they were talking to David and he said, I'd rather face God uh, than man because God is merciful. In Psalm, in Psalm 25, verse 6, listen to this, Psalm 40, verse 11. Psalm 51 1, Psalm 77 9, Psalm 79 8, Psalm 103 4, Psalm 119 77 and 156. The Bible says he, his mercies are tender. He, is, he calls them tender mercies. That's amazing. It's not like God comes to us and says, All right, I'll be merciful to you. No. He comes with compassion. And he comes very tenderly to us. And offers his mercy. That's the kind of God he is. Psalm 145 verse 9. The Bible says his mercies are over all his works. He does what he does because he is merciful. You know we don't deserve anything good folks. That's right. We just don't. I mean if God hates sin as much as he hates sin. And we are full of sin. We don't deserve anything good. But they are, his mercies are over all his works. He does what he does. Because he is merciful. He treats us like he treats us because he is merciful. Again, stepping back, I mean, God doesn't bless me and, and give me all kinds of good things and, 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 and give me the kind of life that I have because, well, he's just a great guy. And I just want to, I just think that I should be really good to him because, boy, he's just amazing. No, God doesn't look at me like that at all. He, he gives what he gives me, he does what he does for me because he's merciful. I don't deserve any of this stuff right. at all. Right. I don't deserve anything that God has given me whatsoever. <clears throat> Jeremiah 16.5 says he can take away his mercy. When we st stop trying our best, he can take that mercy away. 1 Chronicles 7.13. 17.13, I mean. Psalm 119, verse 58. He is merciful according to his word. Again, never will he do anything in our life outside his word. Everything he does is according to his word. So, it's not like uh, we, can, we can stand up here and we can say, and somebody may walk out here tonight and say, well, I have a merciful God. So it really doesn't matter how I live, God's merciful to me. God's going to be merciful to me. You better pay attention to the word of God. Because he's going to give his mercy out according to his word. Now, there's plenty of it. There's all kinds of mercy available to you. But you better make sure that you are in line to be able to get it. Numbers 14, 18, and 19. It goes, mercy goes along with long-suffering and forgiveness. It's, part, it's a package deal. First Chronicles 16, verse 34 <clears throat> says, it's, it, Mercy lasts forever. It lasts forever. Uh, Psalm 106, verse 1, the same thing. We just read in Psalm 136, uh, 26 times for his mercy endureth forever. Did you notice that? It lasts forever. <clears throat> 20 times in the Bible God combines mercy with truth 20 times Psalm 25 10 <clears throat> Psalm 85 10 Proverbs 16 6 Proverbs 20 28 are just some verses where he combines mercy and truth they are mentioned together he is merciful to those who with all their heart Try to live the truth. 
See, <clears throat> mercy and truth go together. See, you have to understand how important truth is to God. It is above anything to him. The truth, okay? He magnified his word above his name. Jesus said, sanctify them through thy word. Thy word is truth. So he's, sang, he's, he's actually magnifying truth above his name. He is, he is so, this is such a big thing to him. He will not bend the truth. He will not twist the truth. He will not change the truth at all. And if you're going to get mercy from God, which he wants to give you, and it's readily available to you, then you have to make sure you're trying your best to live the truth. Psalm 77, 8, sometimes it is hidden. It seems like it is gone. Psalm 86, 5, there's, there's, the Bible says there's plenty of mercy for everyone. In fact, I want to read that to you. Psalm 86, verse 5. I wish you'd write these down and, and do a Bible study on mercy. It'll excite you if you really realize what you're reading. Psalm 86, 5. <clears throat> for thou art good, for thou, Lord, art good and ready to forgive and plenteous in mercy unto all them that call upon thee. Plenteous in mercy. I learned this as a Christian that you're going to have to use the mercy of God several times in your life. Right. It never runs out. Plenteous. There's plenty of mercy available for you. You need to quit believing Satan's uh, <coughs> lie <coughs> that that you are that that God can't stand you. God's mad at you. Uh, God 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 is is fed up with your constant failures. And and start hanging on to the mercy that He has. And start believing that a God wants to give you mercy. He does not want to uh, wipe you out. Psalm ninety verse fourteen. It is satisfying. <coughs> mercy is satisfying. It keep, can keep me moving forward. In my life. So I'm one of, it's what I need to keep moving forward in my life. It's exactly what I need. When, when I've stumbled and I've fallen. And, I, and I'm disgusted with myself. Mercy is exactly what I need to get up and keep going. Psalm 103. <clears throat> verse 11. It is great toward them that fear him. Notice that. Let's, back, let's turn there so you can see it. Psalm 103, verse 11. It is great. That means it is mighty and strong toward them that fear him. <clears throat> See that? They, this is talking about someone that fears God. Not someone who just lives their life and, and uh, with absolutely no fear of God whatsoever. A carefree, who cares attitude. I'm going to live the way I want to live. I'm going to do what I want to do attitude. Absolutely no fear at all of your, of your heavenly father. Like there's going to be no consequences at all for your actions. There's no mercy to a person like that, but to someone who fears him, great is his mercy toward that person. Psalm 109, verse 21. The Bible says, calls mercy good. Psalm 1, I'll say it's good, my soul. Psalm 119, 124. He deals with us according to his mercy. He deals with me according to his mercy. I'm so thankful for that. He doesn't deal with me according to my sins. He deals with me according to his mercy. <clears throat> I'll tell you, I, 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 I have felt like Brother Pierce was talking about, I felt like a failure before in my Christian life. Things I've struggled with, and then you give in to the struggle, and you think, oh, my goodness. <sighs> wow. What's the use? What's the use? See? But he doesn't deal with me according to the stupid thing I just did. He deals with me according to his mercy. His mercy. I want to give you. I want to give you what you don't deserve. You don't deserve any more help. But I want to help you. I want to let, hold my hand out to you. And I want to help you. That's God. That's God's mercy. You think Peter, I mean, you imagine cursing and denying the Lord. Look at what, look what Jesus did for him. Look at what he did. Look at how he came to him. Look at how when he when he came when he rose from the dead, he gave special attention to Peter. Why? Because he's so merciful. That's why. I mean, he did something awful. He cursed and denied the Lord. And yet God gave him special attention after his resurrection. To try to get him back to where he should be. Merciful. That's God. That's God. 
Psalm 145, verse 8. His mercy goes along with his graciousness, his compassion. <clears throat> so Isaiah 54, 8, 9, 8 and 10. It goes, his mercy goes along with his patience and his kindness. That's God for you. That's God. Yes, we are dealing every day with a father who hates sin. But we're dealing with a father who loves us and, and is gracious and compassionate and patient and kind and merciful. Boy, I can serve a God like that. I, I can make it with a God. I can, listen, I, don't take this wrong, but I can be human with a God like that. Because I know He expects me to be. And I know when my human side comes out, when my flesh comes out, God's not saying, oh, oh, that's awful. No. <clears throat> he says, okay, are you, are you, do you want my forgiveness? You want to get up and try this again? If you want to, let's do it. That's the way God is. Now, let me tell you who gets it. By the way, He chooses. He chooses who to be merciful to. Go back to Romans chapter 9 teaches us in Exodus 33 also. But in Romans chapter 9, Romans chapter 9, he says this. For he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, <clears throat> and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it's not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for the same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy. Boy, Paul says it twice in four verses. He will have mercy on whom he will have mercy. He chooses who to be merciful to. Now, so who gets it? Who gets it? Now, none of us are worthy of him. Go to Genesis 32.10. Let's see what, what Abraham, what, uh, not Abraham, in Genesis 32, what Jacob said. Genesis 32, verse 10. This is what Jacob said. And this ought to be our attitude. I am not worthy of the least of all the mercies and of all the truth which thou hast showed unto thy servant. We are not worthy of the mercy. If you say, well, <coughs> would God show mercy to you? Uh, he's gonna, he chooses whom he's, he's going to show mercy to. Will it be you? And I'll, I need to say, if I'm, if I'm going to think the way the Bible says the thing, I don't deserve it. Luke 18, 13. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Now, who, does he, who gets the mercy then? Who gets it? Okay, pay, pay close attention to this. Psalm 18, 25. Psalm 18, 25. Who gets this mercy? And boy, this, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a gift from God. It's an amazing thing from God that we need. So, it's Psalm 18, 25. With the merciful, thou wilt show thyself merciful. Who gets God's mercy? <clears throat> Those who show it to others. Did you hear that? Those who show it to others. Matthew 5, 7, Blessed are merciful, they shall obtain mercy. Are you merciful to others? Or are you, are you going to give them what you think they deserve? If you want God's mercy, you've got to be merciful to other people. Think about that. Now, just think about your life. Am I a merciful person? You say, well, mercy just isn't one of my gifts. Well, why don't you just make it one of your gifts? Why don't you just, just and you can even forget about it being a gift and just start obeying the Bible and being merciful to people. God said to be merciful. Who, who gets the mercy? Though, to those, mercy comes to those who return, who return to him when they're away. Second Chronicles 30, verse 9. Jeremiah 3.12, Joel 2.13. Three cases where people were away from God, they came back to God, they repented, and, they, and, they, um, and God showed them mercy. If you're going to get back to God, there has to be some repentance. You, ha you have to repent of your sin. You can't just say, well, uh, I'm going to pick up where I left off. Well, you got to get things right first. You got to do some repentance. You've got to change your mind. You got to say, you know what, Lord? Uh, I was away from you because I was living like this. I'm not going to live like that anymore. I was I was uh, away from you because I was thinking like this. I'm not going to think like that anymore. See, 
You got to change. There has to be a change, a repentance, a, a change of direction in your life. And when that's, that's what you call returning to God. And when you do that, God said, I will be merciful to you. See, because if I get away from God, how many chances do I deserve? None. If I get more than none, that's mercy. That's mercy. But God said here, three, at least three different times in the Bible, he showed mercy to people who had turned from him. And we can name several more. They came back. They got their hearts right. They repented. They got, they got their, their sins forgiven. They acknowledged the fact they had messed up and how they had messed up. It's not like, okay, Lord, I've sinned. Now I'm coming back. No, you gotta, you got to face what you've done. you got to name it to him. You've got to confess that sin to him. I'm guilty of this, Lord. I'm guilty of thinking this way. I'm guilty of doing these things. I'm sorry. And then God will show you mercy. <clears throat> who's, who's he going to show mercy to? To those who love his name. Psalm 119, verse 132. Psalm 119, verse 132. The psalmist said this. Psalm 119, 132. Look thou upon me and be merciful unto me as thou usest to do unto those that love thy name. God said, you will have mercy if you love my name. Now, um, God can tell if you love his name. I mean, if I said, if I, if I, we had a show of hands, who, don't raise your hand, but if I had a show of hands, who loves the name of Jesus? I doubt there'd be anybody in this in this room that understood the question that would not raise their hand. But God knows whose hand goes up who really means it. You know he tells. He knows your heart. And he sees your life. See? There's a lot of people that say it, but God's looking for people who show it. But to those that lo truly love his name, there's going to be mercy. Who, who does he show mercy to? Deuteronomy 5.10, <clears throat> Deuteronomy uh, 7, 9, and 12, 1 Kings 3.6, Nehemiah 1.5, Daniel 9.4, Hosea 10.12. To those who love him and obey him, he shows mercy. To those who love him and obey him, he shows mercy. Now, I'm talking about something tonight that you need in your life. That you'll not be able, without his mercies, if it wasn't for his mercies, we'd be consumed. You understand that? We would be consumed. The sin in our life, the direction we're headed, would consume us. If it wasn't for the mercies of God. Who does he show mercy to? Deuteronomy 13, 17. Proverbs 28, 13. Well, let me just show you. Let's read that one. Chapter 28, verse 13 of Proverbs. I'm, I'm all ears here. I'm all focused on this because this is something I've got to have. I know myself. I know what I am. I know the struggles. I know the failures. There's not a week has gone by since I've been saved that I could not stand in a pulpit, and conf I won't do this, but confess a sin to you. I do it once in a while. You know, you hear it. It's what you get excited about whenever I confess my sins. As soon as I say, I'm going to confess a sin, the people who are not listening are now listening. <coughs> it's amazing. All of a sudden, oh, pen comes out, paper comes out, start writing it down. <coughs> Chapter 28, verse 13. He that covereth his sin shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Wow, isn't that amazing? What a blessing. What a blessing. Mercy all throughout the Bible. <clears throat> Those who forsake their sin get mercy. Uh, <clears throat> who gets mercy? Those who try their best for him. 1 Kings 8.23, 2 Chronicles 6.14. 2 Chronicles chapter 6, verse 14. I want to read that to you. 2 Chronicles chapter 6 and verse number 14. The Bible says here, And said, O Lord God of Israel, There is no God like thee in the heaven nor in the earth, which keepest covenant, watch this, listen carefully, and showest mercy unto thy servants that walk before thee with all their hearts. That's who gets mercy. Those who walk before God 
with all their hearts. You know, just just translating to our to, to our simple interpretation of that, those who do their best for God, those who try their best, they get mercy. Who gets mercy? Psalm thirty two ten, Psalm fifty two eight. Those who trust in Him, those who trust in Him. Who gets mercy? Psalm thirty three twenty two. Those who hope in God. Who gets mercy? Isaiah sixty ten. To those in God's favor. Those who obtain the favor of God in their life. <clears throat> you see, <clears throat> now, of course, it's available. Now, let me just share quickly quickly with you who doesn't get it. Right? Isaiah 9, 17, the hypocrite, the evildoer, the talker of trouble. Okay, This person is just, he speaks evil with his mouth. He talks hypocritical. He speaks evil of people. He talks of tr causing trouble. Isaiah 9, 17 says they don't have mercy. Uh, Isaiah 27, 11, people of no understanding. They don't take time to understand what God's all about. They don't try to figure out the Christian life. They don't try to figure out God and what he's, what he's trying to do in their life. They don't try to follow his path. There's no mercy there. Hebrews 10, 28, to those who, des those who despise God's law. Those who despise God's law. They don't get mercy. So there are people that, that don't receive it. It's available, but there's people that don't get it. He wants to give it, but there's people he won't give it to. I don't want to be in that group. He wants to show mercy on all unbelievers. He wants to, <clears throat> but he can't if they reject his salvation. Now, let me tell you when, it, when mercy is shown. We see mercy in salvation. I mean, it is right there. And we see mercy in our daily walk with God. We see mercy in, in God giving us heaven. I mean, talk about getting something we don't deserve. A place, think about this, a place where there's no sorrow, a place where there's no sadness, a place where there's no tears, a place where there's no sin, Wow. We see mercy in God's forgiveness. I mean, <clears throat> isn't it incredible? Jesus said, as many times as you sin, and you come to me, and you're sorry, and you confess it, I'll forgive you. That's mercy. We see God's mercy. You know where else we see it, Christians? We see God's mercy in America. Why is in America consumed? Answer me that question. Why isn't America consumed? Why hasn't God destroyed this wicked country? This anti-God wicked country? Because he's merciful. Now, <clears throat> when is it shown? The Bible says, Psalm 37, 26, he is ever, ever, ever merciful to his obedient children. It's shown all the time to his obedient children. Hebrews 8.12, he is merciful to our unrighteousness. Psalm 6.2, he is merciful in, in our weakness when we sin. Psalm 9.13, he is merciful in trouble. When we make mistakes and bring trouble into our life, he's merciful. And, and he's willing to come and help us get out of it. Psalm 25.16, he is merciful in affliction. James 3.17, he's merciful when he shares his wisdom with us. He doesn't have to give it to us, but he does. I mean, I, I know how, you know what, I, I'm not very good at it, but I know how to live life. I do. I've learned it from God. He's given me wisdom. He said, amen, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Who give it to all men liberally and upbraideth not. Well, I asked him and he's given it to me. And, and, and so it, he offers wisdom to us and gives it to us, but we don't deserve that. I don't deserve it at all. But he, he, he says, I'll give it to you. I mean, I'm talking about something here that, that is an amazing thing that I need so desperately in my life, but the very definition of it is God God coming to me and stooping with kindness to an inferior with pity and compassion and God giving me what I don't deserve. Now, that's what I'm talking about tonight. Something that's so, so much needed, so desperately needed in my life. And I have this holy God who loves me so much and is willing to give me this as much as I need daily. Daily. See? Now here's what his mercy does. <clears throat> it 
keeps God from forsaking us when we do wrong. Nehemiah 9.19 It moved God to help his people. Nehemiah, Nehemiah 9.27-28, Psalm 59.10, Psalm 109 verse 26, Psalm 143.12 It moved God to help his people. It sometimes causes God to change his course of action. Isaiah 63.7 it stops him from consuming us. Go to Lamentations 3.22. Lamentations 3.22. Right after Jeremiah. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, <clears throat> because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Now look at this. Great is thy faithfulness. God is going to be faithful in giving me mercy. And he says, it's because of his mercies <clears throat> that we are not consumed. It brings out his compassion. Lamentations 3.32 It makes prayer available to us. In Daniel chapter 9, verse 18. In Psalm 27.7 and Psalm 69.13 It makes prayer available to us. I can go to God and, and I can talk to God and I can ask God for the things that I need and I can ask God to to uh, help me through my struggles, and I can ask God to forgive me, and I can ask God to help people in my life that I love. I can go to Him, to the throne of grace. I can, in fact, Hebrews 4, Hebrews 4 says, I can come boldly to the throne of grace. That's mercy. Because of His mercy. That's why you can pray. God doesn't have to let it. We don't deserve to pray. Many times over we've forfeited our right for God to hear us. But because of His forgiveness and because of His mercy, I can go to God and know without a doubt that He's hearing me when I pray. I mean, did you ever get this picture? You're there and you're going to the throne. You. Now guess, think about this. God the Father sitting on His throne. God the Father. Who is that? That's God. Holy Righteous, pure God. Who's coming? Who's kneeling before Him? A piece of dust that has knowingly and willingly broken His law over and over and over again. And yet, I can go to Him and He will hear me and He will answer me. Why? Because of His mercy. You see? Because He's so merciful. He's giving me what I don't deserve, and that's a hearing before Him. He's listening to me. It makes prayer available to us. The Bible says so. The Bible says that. It makes Him accept our lives. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. It overrides His anger. Psalm 103, verse 8. It sent Jesus to the cross. Hebrews 2, 17. <clears throat> that's one of the reasons Jesus went to the cross. He is so merciful. It keeps us from being moved. Away from where we should be. Psalm 21 7, Psalm 61 7, Psalm 94 18, 2 Corinthians 4 1. Listen, you, you can stand up here and say the same thing. I have done enough things in my life that could easily have moved me off the path. But tonight I stand here, my, my, my heart, my feet are fixed on the narrow way, on the path that God has laid out for my life. And I have not moved off that path. And the only reason I have not moved off that path is because of God's mercy. Amen. Psalm 25, 7. It causes God to remember us in a favorable way. Psalm 33, 18. Psalm 51, 1. It causes God to blot out our sins. Proverbs 16, 6. Titus 3, 5. It causes God to blot out our sins. How in the world could God erase that stuff off my record because of his mercy? How could he do it? Psalm 130, verse 7, it gives us hope. It gives us hope. Boy, I'll tell you, if you think about it, it gives you hope. Like I said before, I don't care how much you've messed up. I don't care. Listen. You, you, may be, you may be on your way backsliding right now. I don't know. I hope you're not. But let me just tell you if, you, if you keep going and you backslide, let me just remind you of the truth. 
you have a merciful God who's ready to restore you to where you were. Whenever you come back, He'll do it. And He's waiting for you like the Father waited for the prodigal son. He's waiting for you to come to the end of yourself. And when you do, and you make your move toward God, He will run to meet you like the Father went to meet the prodigal son. Why? Mercy. Mercy. That's it. I mean, again, when you're looking at how much he hates evil, he hates sin. Remember what the Father did when he looked down and saw Jesus Christ, who was now sin. He turned his back. I can't look at that. I mean, you know how deep his love was for his son? But it showed you how much his hate, the hatred was for sin. He turned his back. And yet, he's willing to take me and be merciful to me. That's hope. No matter how far down I go. I wish, I wish you'd get a hold of that. I wish you'd grasp that tonight. And, and not feel so, not, not believe all the lies of the devil. I mean, yeah, it's not good for you to commit even one sin against God. But I don't care how far you go. You've got somebody, you've got a Heavenly Father who's willing to take you back because He's merciful. What, what does God's mercy do? It brings God pleasure. Psalm 147, 11. Micah 7, 18. It brings God pleasure. <clears throat> I mean, God actually is pleased to do this. He's pleased to do it. And then the Bible says, it will, it will follow you all the days of your life, Psalm 23, 6. Now, mercy can forsake you. You can walk away from it. You can reject it. You can be determined to go your own way and do your own thing. And then mercy will forsake you, but that's not what God wants for your life. So, I look at all this. I, I read all these scriptures. <clears throat> I mean, lots of them. Scores of them. How should I respond to it? Well, we should sing of his mercies. Look at Psalm 89.1. It should make us want to sing. Psalm 89.1. Psalm 89.1. Listen to this. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. <clears throat> you see, we ought to want to sing. We ought to be so excited about it. We ought to be so thrilled about it, of his mercy. But we take it for granted. We take a lot of things about God for granted. We take, take his forgiveness for granted. We take his compassion for granted. We take his, we take his patience for granted. We take his mercy for granted. But we ought to, we ought to get excited about it. We, we don't, one of the reasons we take things for granted is because we don't really think about it. That's why a lot of times when you read the Bible, God will use, especially in the book of Psalms, he used the word selah. Stop and think. That's what we need to do. We need to stop and think. Hey, think about what you just read. Think about what God just said. It's amazing. I mean, if it's true, it is really incredible. It is. And so it ought to cause us to break into song. We ought to get excited about the fact that God loves me even though I've messed up. Amen. How should we respond to it? We should ask for it when we've sinned. Hebrews 4.16, Matthew 9.27, Matthew 15.22, Matthew 17.15, Psalm 41.4, Psalm 123.3. We should ask for it when we've sinned. Ask for God to be merciful to you. <clears throat> well, how should we respond to it? We should ask for it when the enemy is attacking. Psalm 56.1. When the enemy is attacking us, God, be merciful to me and save me from this attack. I don't deserve your help, but be merciful to me and give it. See, never come to God presuming that you deserve what you're asking for. No, always come to God realizing it's if God gives me this, if God gives me what I need, if he gives me forgiveness, if he gives me help from the attack, if he gives me <clears throat> mercy in the midst of all the calamities that I'm going through, Psalm 57, 1, it is because that's the way he is. It's not because I deserve it. Because of who he is. He's a God of mercy. How should we respond to his mercy? We should recognize it. Lot 
recognized God was merciful to him. Genesis 19, 19. Abraham recognized the mercy of God in his life in 24, Genesis 24, 27. Moses recognized the mercy of God in his life in Exodus 15, 13. We ought to recognize the mercy of God. Hey, do you thank God every day for his mercy? When's the last time you acknowledged it? When's the last time you did what the sinner did in, 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 uh, in Luke 18? God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Recognize it. Psalm 13, 5, trust in it. Trust in his mercy. If this is true, what I'm preaching tonight, and I've given you so many verses, only, you only need one. If only one verse in the whole Bible talks about God's mercy, then he's a merciful God. But there's a whole lot. You ought to trust in his mercy. <clears throat> Listen, I can go to God. God's not. God's going to be merciful to me. He's not going to give me what I deserve. I don't need to be afraid to face Him. I need to come before Him humbly and say, Father, forgive me for I've sinned against You and, and believe with all your heart that God's going to be merciful to you and give you what you don't deserve and that's forgiveness and give you what you don't deserve and that's forgetfulness of your sins. Trust in it. Psalm 31, 7, Be glad and rejoice in it. Be glad and rejoice in it. Micah 6, 8. Love it. Love is mercy. Psalm 118, 29. Thank God for it. Romans 15, 9. Glorify God for His mercy. What should I do? How should I respond to God's mercy on me? Show it to other people. Luke 6, 36. Luke 10, 37. Zechariah 7, 9. Show it to other people. I'm serious. How in the world can you condemn somebody for what they've done to you when God doesn't condemn you for what you've done to him? How can you not give another person a chance when they've done something wrong to you? How can you not give them a chance when God gives you chance after chance after chance? You, you need to show mercy. You need to show people mercy. The people that don't show mercy are, not, are the ones that don't understand the mercy of God in their life. You don't comprehend what it means. See, I'm showing you tonight how important it is. I'm showing you tonight that it ought to be a huge part of your life. It's a huge part of the Bible. It's a huge part of God. And if you're building a relationship with God, it'll be a huge part of your life too. God has a controversy with you. If you're not merciful. Hosea chapter 4 verse 1. He has a controversy with you. He's got a problem with you. If you're not a merciful person. I'll tell you what. I, I, I don't know. I need you to be merciful to me. I really do. I am a human being. I make mistakes. In my life. And a big part of my life. Is being a husband. So I need my wife to be merciful to me. A big part of my life is being a father. So I need my, my, my daughters, and I even need their husbands, to be merciful to me. A big part of my life is being a pastor. And I need the people I pastor to be merciful to me. I don't need you to jump down my throat and condemn me. I need, you, I need your mercy. I say with the guy that went before the judge, Judge, I know I'm guilty. But what I need is your mercy. That's what I need. Examples of the Bible, of God's mercy in the Bible. In Genesis nineteen sixteen, God was merciful to Lot. In Exodus thirty four six, God was merciful to Moses. In Genesis thirty nine twenty one, God was merciful to Joseph. God's mercy was shown to David in Second Chronicles one. In Ezra chapter seven, God showed it to Ezra. In Nehemiah thirteen, He showed it to Nehemiah. In Luke one, He showed it to Elizabeth the mother of John the Baptist. In Luke 17, Jesus showed it to the lepers who came to him and wanted cleansing. In 1 Timothy 1.13, he showed it to Paul. Luke chapter 1, 72 and 78, Jesus' coming was, was an act of mercy, the Bible says. An act of mercy. I just gave you a few examples of God showing mercy. You know what? I could have gave you a lot more. I could have called every name in this room Amen. as examples of God's mercy. 
when I think of what I should be compared to what I am, it can be I it can be discouraging. I mean, I, I, I don't think I've made anywhere near the progress I should have made in all these years. I think I've fallen way short of what I should be. Thank God for his mercy. It's because of his mercy I am not consumed. It's because of his mercy I have another chance today. And so do you. Do you recognize God's mercy toward you? Will you accept it? Accept from him and keep going. Don't stop. If you're growing tonight, accept God's mercy, his daily mercy on your life and keep going. Don't stop growing. Don't stop going forward. Keep going and keep going until you die. If you stop growing tonight, go to God and ask him for mercy and start over and get going again. Rejoice in it. Just rejoice in the mercy of God and keep trying your best. If you keep trying your best, you're guaranteed to receive the mercy of God whenever it's needed. And it's going to be needed a lot in your life, as in all of ours. All right, let's pray. As about eyes closed, thank you, Lord, for the Bible. Thank you for this wonderful truth. What a great word. There are so many great words in the Bible. So many amazing words in the Bible. Salvation, forgiveness, love, <coughs> heaven. Mercy is one of them. You stoop with kindness to an inferior like me, with pity and compassion. You give me what I don't deserve. Thank you so much for being merciful to me. Help us all to <clears throat> be in a position in our life where, where you, you can show your mercy. Where if, when the Bible says you will show mercy on whom you will show mercy, we read clearly in the Bible tonight who you will show mercy to, who you've chosen to show mercy to. And we can be one of those people. Lord, help us to be in that, to line ourselves up <clears throat> with the Bible so you can give us mercy. And Lord, help us to remember to, to rejoice in your mercy, to thank you for your mercy every day and to ask for it when we need it and keep going for you heads bowed eyes closed tonight you should accept it okay you messed up you've blown it you're not what you ought to be you've done things you shouldn't have done alright what are you going to do about it God said I'll forgive you and I'll show you mercy we accept that tonight from him. Will you make mercy, the mercy of God, a regular part of your life? Thanking him for it daily, rejoicing in it, and asking him for it. And then will you be a merciful person to other people? You know what? Your spouse is going to need mercy. Your children are going to need mercy. Your parents are going to need you to be merciful. Your friends are going to need you to be merciful to them. You're going to need to show it. Will you do that? Will you promise God you'll be merciful? I don't know what God said to you tonight from the word of God, but <clears throat> we read a lot of verses, talked about a lot of different things about mercy. It is a huge part of God, and it should be a huge part of your life. Whatever God said to you tonight, you need to use the altar you come and use it. If you're here tonight and you don't know Jesus as your Savior, God will be merciful to you, a sinner, and he will save you and give you eternal life. Christian, God will be merciful to you wherever you're at in your Christian life. Whatever you've done, he'll give you mercy. But not only give it to you today, he'll give it to you any day you need it. It's for you. <clears throat>